Hi everyone, I'm Farida and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the risk x ray age estimation. At the end of this video, you can learn why is it important in dentistry and how you can be able to identify your skeleton age based on the risk x ray. Before I jump in, I wanted to thank all of you guys for your support for growing this channel and I hope the videos would be helpful for anyone out there. So if you liked it, please share it with your friends. Feel free to skip around and click through that time code below. At first, let's talk about the difference between skeleton age and chronological age or the birth age. Birth age or chronological age is calculated from the date of birth, so from when you were born. But skeleton age or bone age is showing your bone maturation and growth. Bone maturation is a measurement of mineralization, ossification, and developing your bone, the size and the shape. So maybe your skeleton age can be ahead of your birth age or back behind. So why is it important in dentistry? When we're treating skeleton malocclusion like class 2 or class 3, knowing the skeleton age of the patient is important for starting orthodontic treatments like growth modification treatments. It is important if the patient is in the skeleton growth stage or has passed the peak stage or passed the puberty of skeleton growth. Maybe we need to start the treatment earlier. Okay, let's look at this schematic skeleton view of the rest bones. The rest contains four types of bones, starting with the phalanges, five phalanges of the fingers every finger have three parts of phalanges the proxima the intermediate and the distal except the thumb that has two parts just to know when i talk about proximal it means close to the body and distal far from the body then we have the metacarpal bones that start from the thumb would be the first and going towards the little finger would be the fifth. The metacarpals contain three parts. Starting from the proximal would be the base, then the body, and then the head. Down here, we have the ulna, that is the smaller and thinner bone. And then we have the radius, the thicker bone, or the larger one. I know I didn't miss these guys. These eight bones are called the eight carpal bones that are small irregular shape in the palm the eight carpal bones can be divided in two rows the proximal row and the distal row so we have the proximal bones that are closer to the arm and the distal bones that are far from the body so the proximal row starting from lateral to the medial would be scaphoid, lunate, trichotrome, and the fusiform. The distal row from the lateral to the medial would be trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and the hamate. We have eight carpal bones that are scaphoid, lunate, trichotrome, physiform, hamate, capitate, trapezoid, and trapezium. The capitate is the captain or the head of the family. So it's the largest bone, the biggest bone, and is in the middle. To remember the bones, you can use the word so long to the picky, here comes the thumb. It will help you to remember the orientation of the bones and how to label them. So starting from the proximal bones will be the four bones here will be labeled from one to four counting from the thumb to the picky and then we have the distal four bones that will be labeled from five to eight continuing from the picky to the thumb. I 
I know the tricky part is that we have three T's. So here's a simple trick so you can remember the three T's in the carpal bones. The trichotron, the trapezoid, and the trapezium. So if you're using the so long to pinky, here comes the thumb, the first word that begins with the T is the trichotron. So the tri stands for three, that would be the third position, or would the third bone in our sentence. The second T would be the trapezoid. The trapezoid is next to the capitate, so you can remember it from trap and the trapezoid and cap and the capitate, so they rhyme kind of with each other. So remember the capitate and then the trapezoid is the adjacent one near the capitate. And then we have the trapezium. The trapezium has M. And then we have the thumb that has M. So the closest carpal bone to the thumb would be the trapezium. So the simple trick for the 3T was the trichotron would be the tri or the third bone. The trapezoid, trap, cap. So the trapezoid is near the capitate. And then we have the trapezium, that's near the thumb. And I hope this trick will help you to remember these carpal bones. So now that I know the orientation and positioning and the anatomic of my bones inside the rest, how can I assess my skeleton age? So what is important for assessing the skeleton age is the order of maturation. The ossification in the carpal bones can be like a clockwise, starting in the center from the capitate or the captain or from the head of the family that is the largest and biggest carpal bone and that would start the maturation and ossification and then with the last one be the fizzy form or you can say the lazy form the lazy bone that is the last one that is, starts the ossification and maturation so starting with the capitate and going on a clockwise direction would be capitate, hamate, dropping out the lazy one, and that would we have the trichotron, then we have the lumate, the scaphoid, the tra and the trapezium. And trapezoid and then we'll go back to the fizzy form. To remember the age number, if you start from the carpal bones, if you see two carpal bones your patient is two months which one we're talking about the capitate and the hamate so if i see capitate and then i'll see the hamate my patient will be two months if you see three carpal bones the patient is three years old so we see the capitate the hamate and the trichotron if you see four carpal bones, the patient is four years old. And if you see the STT, or i rather say the scaphoid, the trapezoid, and the trapezium, the patient is approximately five to six years. So seeing more than five carpal bones except the fizzy form, the patient approximately would have five to six years. And if you see the fizzy form, your patient would be about 11 to 12 years. So let's talk about the age maturation in the radius and ulna. And we'd only see the lower end inside our rest x ray. So the radius lower end appears in two years, and the fusion occurs in 18 to 19 years old. To remember it, the R from the radius, it's kind of spelled like a two, so your patient will be two years old. And the lower end inside the ulna would appear in five to six years, and the fusion will occur in 17 to 18 years. The ulna, you can say like the U, you can kind of spell like a six, a sleeping six. So the ulna lower end would appear in about six years old. The middle carpal bones have three parts, the base, the body, and the head. The head of the second to fifth middle carpal bone appears at one to two years, and the fusion occurs at 
15 to 19 years and the base of the first metacarpal bone appears about 2 years old. And the fusion occurs about 15 to 17 years. Let's see all of it again in the x-ray. In the carpal bones, look for the fusiform. If it exists, and I know it's the last one to appear, the patient is about 9 to 12 years. If not, look at the other ones. If you see the capitate in hamate, the patient is about 2 to 3 months. If I see capitate happens in trichotrum or three bones, my patient is approximately three years. If I see capitate hamate, trichotrum and lunis, my patient is about four years or I see four bones. If I see the STT, scaphoid, trapezium, and trapezoid, or more than four bones, my patient is approximately five to six years. So like a clockwise rotation, so I see capitate and hamate, then I'll see the trichotrome, and then I'll see the lunate, and then I'll see the STT. The lower end of the radius, and then I'll see the lower end of the ulna. In the middle carpal, starting from the head of the second to the fifth, and the base of the first or the thumb. Okay, so let's say what we had in overall. In my rest x-ray, first looking at the carpal bones. In the carpal bones, look for the fusiform or the lazy bone. If the fusiform exists, that I know it would be the last carpal bone to be appeared, my patient is around 9 to 12 years old. But if not, look at the numbers of the carpal bones. If I see two carpal bones, my patient will be around two months if I see three carpal bones approximately three years old if I see four carpal bones approximately four years old and if I see the STT or I see more than four carpal bones my patient be approximately five to six years okay and that's all for today hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and press that bell button for getting notifications for the next video. Have an awesome day!